Hello everyone, uh, Stepan here. Uh, this is the first video on the Sicilian defense, uh, besides the, the introductory one I made a few days ago. And first of all, if you're unfamiliar with the theory of the Sicilian defense, the ideas behind the move c5 and the, the variations which can occur and the uh, sort of main lines like the Knight of the Dragon, etc. I would recommend you watch the introductory video first. I will put the link in the description below. And now we are going to focus on the Accelerated Dragon. This is the variation I decided to start with because it seems to be one of the most popular ways for, uh, for black to, to fight white. Uh, I will also link uh, two games I have played against the Accelerated Dragon last month. Uh, one of them in the Croatian Cup. Actually, both of them in the Croatian Cup. Uh, and in one I had an easy victory because my opponent uh, didn't really know the theory. And in another one I won despite making a theoretical mistake. So you, I think you can learn something from those games. I will also uh, write down some of the prominent players who play the uh, Accelerated Dragon on a super high level. So you can uh, study their games. Okay, uh, first of all, let's get to the position in which the Accelerated Dragon occurs. So after e4 by white, c5 the Sicilian, knight to f3. Uh, this is what the uh, Accelerated Dragon branches out from. After knight to c3, it isn't really possible to, to enter the Accelerated Dragon. Same uh, can be applied, the same can be said about uh, pawn to c3. So now, now knight to c6. Uh, if black plays d6, then once again it's really... Uh, I'm not sure if it's impossible to enter the Accelerated Dragon, but I, I think it might be. So now d4, c takes d4, knight takes d4, and now g6. This is the Accelerated Dragon. And uh, the, the, the Sicilian Dragon is where black fianchettos the bishop, and then plays the move d6, knight to f6, and uh, starts to create an attack along the queen side while uh, defending against a kingside onslaught by white on the h and the g files. And this variation is just a faster version of that. And with the move g6, black is basically giving up his uh, attacking plan for the game and uh, giving white uh, an opportunity to decide how he's going to approach his attack. Now there are three moves that white could play here. Uh, firstly, the, I'm going to go over the most passive move and that's the exchange variation in the Accelerated Dragon and that's simply taking on c6. Now once you take on c6, you have given uh, black a positional advantage and after black takes with the b-pawn, of course uh, nobody's going to take with the d-pawn, and he takes, he captures the pawn towards the center, now we can see that black has... A, a, Okay, I'm sorry. There's a cannon in my town that goes off uh, every day at noon and uh, I get startled every time and everybody does. So, okay, that was the cannon. Uh, so, after b takes c6, taking towards the center, black now has more central pawns. You can see that uh, he has the e pawn and the d pawn, white only has the e pawn and... Uh, that means that any endgame is going to be favorable for, for black. However, white does have uh, chances in this opening and the position is equal. The main move for white here ex is exploiting the weak diagonal, which uh, is weakened with the move g6. And white should play queen to d4, attacking with the rook. Now after the, uh, queen to d4, knight to f6 is the main move. And now e5, chasing the knight away. Knight to d5, and now uh, white can afford to play the move e6, of course, once again attacking the rook. Now. And there really aren't that many options for white. He could play uh, for black. I'm sorry. He could play knight to f6, but that's just an inferior move. Uh, but uh, the main move is f6. So this is what black should be playing. And you can see that black is uh, sort of suffering because of his uh, uh, central pawn majority, and white did man did manage to exploit that. But there's really not that much in the position for white, and there's no way to gain a material advantage. The main move here is e takes d7, and after bishop takes d7, normal development, knight to c3, and now queen to b6. So you can see that uh, neither side has really made any progress. Uh, black's uh, structure is now compromised, he has lost his d pawn. Uh, or exchanged it, and uh, now it's not that easy to exploit the central majority he has. Black does, however, have, uh, you could say, a safer king, despite it might not look visually so, but in any case, the position is equal. So, after knight takes c6, if white wants to go for this variation, then you should know this forcing line with queen to d4, knight f6, c5, knight d5, e6, and if black doesn't play f6, then you could gain, gain a small edge. I think that after... Uh, 
After knight to f6, you should take on f7, and after king takes f7, of course, black has lost castling rights, and white should be white should be better. So okay, that's the exchange variation, and uh, I wouldn't rec recommend you play that because uh, I think it's too passive for white, and I think white could get a larger advantage out of the opening. Okay, let's go back. The move g6, so back to the beginning, and uh, on move five, we already went over knight takes c6, the exchange. Uh, the main line is the move knight to c3, and with the move knight to c3, you are, you are trying to form a, a position similar to what you would play against the dragon, and you are trying to transpose into the main line dragon. You can also uh, play the Yugoslav attack, you can play the fischer sozin attack, and you basically get to attack along the king side, and uh, black gets to defend and attack along the c-file. So that's the, the main plan. And uh, after knight to c3, your basic setup is f3, Bishop c4, bishop b3, bishop e3, queen to d2, castles king, castles queen side. So that's what you're going to do. And black is going to play bishop g7, knight to f6, castles short, queen to c7, uh, d6, bishop to d7, rook to c8. And try to attack along the along the c file and play the moves such as b5, a5, etc. So uh, what's most important to remember in the accelerated dragon is that the side that gets to attack faster is... Uh, usually better and is usually going to have a huge advantage because uh, the accelerated dragon isn't an opening such as the perk or the peerts i'm sorry or some lines in the karo khan some lines in the royal peasant which you get to maneuver a lot in this position you actually have to uh, make every move count and losing time is something that could cost you uh, a full point in in many can cases maybe in all cases so after knight to c3 both sides should should uh, go on with their plans as soon as possible so bishop to g7 bishop e3 knight to f6 bishop to c4 castles bishop to b3 so these are the first few moves so after bishop g7 first develop your dark squared bishop uh, knight to f6 that move has to be played bishop to c4 castles and now you don't have to play bishop to b3 but you are going to have to play it anyway so moving the bishop is in advance is a good uh, is a good idea you could also play f3 you could play queen to d2 both moves are okay but bishop to b3 is just the main move now black here has uh, has a couple of options uh, there are two main moves i would say that the that the best move here is the move d6 even though that's not the most commonly played move so i'm, I'm going to go over the most commonly played move first and uh, that's the move a5. Now the move a5 uh, is very aggressive uh, and it's planning to chase the chase the bishop away from the square and to capture the the e5 the e4 pawn because once you advance the pawn to a4 the the e4 pawn is going to fall. So after castles, which is the main move for white, a4, knight takes a4, knight takes e4. You have just traded your flank pawn. Uh, for white's central pawn, the only remaining central pawn, so now we have an even larger positional advantage should an endgame occur. But you have just uh, ruined your pawn structure, you have activated white's pieces a bit more, your knight is misplaced on e4, and it's not really that clear that this bishop uh, is any worse than black's rooks. I would say that it's even better, and I would say that this is the best piece on the board, board uh, now at the moment. So. I think that uh, black shouldn't really be playing a5, because now after a move such as knight to b5, uh, d6, I think that white uh, white has an edge, so I, I think that the move a5 isn't as good. However, it is the main move, so if uh, great players have played it, then it must be okay. I'm just going to show you... Uh, I'm just going to go over some positions. Okay, the highest rated game is Almasi Zoltan versus Skramnik, Anand Malakov, Timo Feyer, Wang Yu, Svidler, Peter. So a lot of great players have played it. Perhaps uh, perhaps I'm wrong, but I, I think that the move d6 is uh, more solid in this position. So after bishop to b3, I would recommend the move d6 and not overextending on the, on the queen side. And, uh, okay, you could argue that the move a5 is stopping any ideas of castling queenside for, for white, because after the, the a file gets opened, then castling is just too dangerous. And the move d6 is slightly more passive, but it's more solid as well. So I think this is, this is the better option. Now to d6, white usually reacts with the move f3, solidifying his defenses, because this pawn is uh, going to be weak, and especially if the knight gets misplaced. So now bishop to d7 and queen to d2 should be played. Those are... I think the moves that uh, 
you, you are going to see in 99% of the games because those are the only logical developing squares for black slide squared bishop and for white's queen. Now here, uh, black has two options. Once again, uh, I think that the, the best option by far is to play the move rook to c8, but we are going to go over that a bit later. First, let me go over uh, after queen to d2, the move knight takes d4. Now, uh, if you take on d4, then of course after bishop takes, you have just uh, given white uh, a greater possibility to exchange your main defender and def uh, exchanging your dark squared bishop in the dragon or the accelerated dragon or the hyper accelerated dragon is never really a good idea because if your dark squared bishop falls, then it's, it becomes really hard to defend. On the other hand, uh, the knight on d4 is the main defender of the, of the c2 square and since you're going to play rook c8, let's say queen c7 and attack along the c file, then that weakens white's defenses as well. So to this, uh, after uh, bishop takes d4, black should uh, continue with the move b5 and white should continue with the move h4, just both sides going for a menacing attack. Now a5, h5, a4. This is what you're going to see most likely in, in most games. Now, uh, this position is sort of strange and uh, white's only move, of course, is, uh, is here. And after that... Uh, White is giving up the bishop, but if white gives up the light squared bishop, or let's say if black takes, then his bishop here is, is falling and getting ex exchanged. So I think that this position is very favorable for white. If you ask the engines, the engines think this is plus one, I think, or something. Yeah, this is plus zero seven, plus zero nine. Yeah, so definitely better for white. And in this position, uh, black shouldn't take, black should play rook to c8. So. Okay, and uh, you can see that uh, visually uh, white does stand an edge and uh, I think that the move knight takes d4 or move 10 shouldn't be your first option, perhaps as a surprise weapon, but I think that's uh, provoking a bit too much and I think that you're making too many weaknesses. Instead of that, after queen to d2 and move 10 by white, I would recommend the move rook to c8 because you are going to have to play it anyway. And why not play it now? Now, you might wonder uh, what happens if a7 drops. I think you should just give that pawn up if knight c6, bishop c6, bishop a7, or yeah, I think you could even even trap the bishop weight. Knight, to c knight takes c6, rook takes c6, bishop takes a7, b6, yeah. Okay, so the bishop is falling off anyway, the, the pawn can't be taken. And after rook to c8, white should ca uh, castle queenside. And now you can see the beginnings of uh, both sides attacking plans and the I think that this is one of the most fun positions in chess and uh, especially if you've, if you've played positions such as the dragon, the accelerated dragon, the, the dragon dwarf, which is a combination of neither and the dragon, then you know how fun this can get and how fast you have to attack in order to make any progress on, or to stand the chance in the game. So now, okay, uh, Black, Black's uh, main move here is knight to e5. And you are trying to get your knight to f5 to provoke white to give up the bishop. So now after king b1, which has to be played at some point, rook to e8, h4, h5, you have to stop white. Now this is a problem and if you give up, if you win a pawn here and open up lines, then it's risky as well. So this should always be calculated very well. Here white's main move is bishop to h6 and now knight to c4, provoking bishop takes c4. Now, uh, after rook takes c4, you do have the bishop pair, but black can uh, deprive you of that immediately with bishop takes g7. And after king takes g7, you can see that both sides have some uh, trouble in the defense. Uh, I would say that white is significantly better here because his attack is faster. But it's really hard to justify uh, the accelerated dragon anyway. And if you don't manage to outplay your opponent in the opening, and I have uh, shown you the best moves for white here, then you're going to be in trouble whatever happens around move 15. So, I mean, not in trouble, but white is always going to have a slight edge. So now here, after king takes g7, g4 should be played by white. And you can see now that uh, there are some problems on the, on the king side. So now h takes, and here... Uh, this is a very far, fun forcing line I have studied uh, a few months ago. Now after h takes g4, uh, white of course uh, shouldn't be playing f takes g4, that would be just a waste of time, white should play h5. And here after h5, uh, the position gets really complicated. Uh, black's best move is rook to h8. If you take, uh, then I, I think you are losing, I'm not sure why, but okay, let's see. Uh, okay, uh, takes here. Yeah, okay, yeah, queen to g5. Okay, sorry. 
queen to g5 is too strong so okay uh, rook to h8 and after rook to h8 h takes g6 you have to take with the f pawn f takes uh, and now uh, after f takes g4 uh, and bishop takes g4 there's a really nice move for white in this line and uh, i was hoping i could surprise my, one of one of my opponents uh, who plays the accelerated dragon with this variation but uh, i went for another line i didn't end up playing knight to c3 on move five so here after bishop takes g4 you can play e5 as white and uh, now this position gets really complicated after e5 of course black has to take d takes e5 and now knight to e6 check uh, of course, if the bishop wasn't on uh, on g4 covering the covering e6, then the queen would drop. But white can play that anyway. Now we'll see why. Uh, knight to e6, check. Bishop takes e6, and now queen d8, rook d8, rook d8. You have just won. Uh, you have just won an exchange, but black has two pawns to show for that. So I think that the position is balanced, but uh, I would always rather have white in this position because I think that the two rooks are, are too strong for the king, which is stuck on g7, and you can always find some, find some mating and the ideas. So let's go over that line again. So after rook to c8, uh, on move 10, castles, knight to e5, uh, king to b1, rook e8, h4, h5, you have to close down the position. If you don't play h5 and you allow h5, then... I think you are going to be mated very soon. h5, bishop h6. White should always try to exchange the dark squared bishop on g7. Knight c4, bishop takes c4. Rook takes c4, bishop g7, king g7. And here g4. Uh, and here uh, black has to react, react fast. So now after h takes, which has to be played, white shouldn't make a mistake of, on, of taking on uh, on g on g4 because if f takes g4 then simply bishop takes g4 and after the bishop gets to h5 then white can't make any more progress so h5 should be played and after rook h8 which is the only move h takes f takes f takes bishop takes e5 a very fun position in which uh, in which you get an imbalance of material so d5 knight e6 check bishop takes e6 queen d8 rook d8 rook d8 and white has two rooks uh, and the knight so an exchange down for two pawns so this is what i wanted to show you after knight to c3 of course after knight to c3 on move five uh, the position can branch out in in many different positions but what you have to remember is bishop to g7 main move bishop e3 knight f6 bishop c4 castles and bishop to b3 and if you're black here i would recommend the move d6 which is far more solid than uh, the move a5 if you're white play f3 solidify your position bishop d7 queen to d2 normal developing moves and now it depends if uh, black plays rook to c8 then as white you're going to be castling queenside perhaps perhaps not immediately but at some point and if white plays uh, knight takes d4 then you are basically never going to castle queenside you're going to have to cope with the move b5 and the menacing attack along the, along the queen side then it's best to castle short in that in that position okay so that was the main line with knight to c3 now let's go over the best variation for white and uh, i think this move is what uh, discourages many people for from playing the accelerated dragon now the two games i've played last, last month you can find in the description below uh, have both been in this exact variation and that's the move c4 after g6 the morozzi bind now the Marozzi bind has one simple uh, idea behind it and that's to prevent the move d5 and to restrain uh, black species. Now in most cases uh, black is going to have trouble developing and white is going to have more space. Now the problem for white is that uh, in many positions it's not that easy to convert and you can't have a winning advantage uh, sometime. But uh, when playing against lesser player players I, I would say anything less than fide master uh, you can basically get a better position out of the opening after the move c4 now let's see why uh, black should continue with the bishop to g7 here of course and now bishop to e3 the, the the knight was double attacked so we have to defend knight to f6 attacking your pawn on, on e4 now knight to c3 should be played uh, of course playing f3 i i believe is not that good uh, you're going to play it uh, in some positions afterwards but knight to c3 is, is a developing move so it's better to play that castles bishop to e2 preparing to castle short d6 castles short and now 
you aren't going to be castling queenside firstly because your queenside is weakened with the move c4 and secondly you're trying to get a small positional edge in the center and on the queen side especially on the on the d5 square now if at any point white should play e5 then d5 is a permanent weakness which should be enough to convert to a, to a victory now bishop to d7 queen to d2 once again the, the only logical squares to develop and here in this position black is best advised to take so knight takes d4 bishop takes d4 and now bishop to c6 and this is the starting position of the accelerated dragon and i believe that this position is going to occur in any game in which the players are rated over 1500 and this far you have to know the theory and now uh what's that good for white in this position now the engines would give this uh, as about 0 0.9 for white which isn't really uh, true isn't your advantage isn't that big but it's just easier to play now white's main problem in the position is the bishop on e2 which isn't really active especially after the move f3 which is going to have to be played and the main problem for black is that his pieces are basically restrained the knight on f6 doesn't have any good squares you're never going to be able to play d5 if you play a rook on c8 then i can play b3 and black has uh, far less attacking ideas than white now let's continue f3 this is the main move a5 trying to gain space uh, gain space on the on the queen side and this is perhaps the most active plan now b3 should be played to stop a4 knight to d7 trying to control the squares c5 and d5 uh, and that's probably the, the best plan for, for black. And in this position, trading the bishop off isn't really that good. I mean, white shouldn't be taking on, on g7 because you can't get a, a fast attack, uh, attack as, you, as you can in the other lines because your king is stuck on g1. So you can't really play g4, h4, h5, etc. So to this, uh, white should uh, give up, white should um, decline the, the trade and play bishop to e3. And now knight to c5 should be, should be played by black. And now once again, uh, the games could branch out in many different ways. Uh, the the position you have to remember is is this setup for white with the pawns on g2, f3, e4, c4, b3, a2, and this is the structure that you are going to be playing if you go for the Morozzi bind against the accelerated dragon. And I would say that uh, this structure is much favorable for white because it's just easier to play. It's not that hard uh, to maneuver your pieces. You have a lot of time, uh, unlike in the main line. You can, you can actually play the moves such as uh, rook to rook to d1, bishop to f1, uh, queen to c2, rook to d2, rook a to d1, and you will most likely have enough time to play that in, in many positions. And black should try to find an active plan. Now, that's not easy, but uh, you should perhaps try to attack along the king side, or you should try to play uh, queen to c7, rook f to b8, and try to advance here and break up white structure. Perhaps even uh, get uh, give up your bishop for the knight so you can weaken the queen side even more and try to gain some advantage that way. Uh, okay, uh, those are the three lines I wanted to show you. This is basically everything you have to know about the accelerated dragon. Now, of course, these are, these are just the... Uh, basics if you would like to master the opening definitely uh, go over at least 30 or 50 games for each move knight c3 c4 and knight x c6 and study the games of uh, grandmasters in those lines to get ideas of your own this was just the introduction into the accelerated dragon so uh, this could help you start playing it but try uh, looking at the games over the board and try getting your own ideas once again please don't use the engine the best way to study an opening is to find your own ideas and then find out why they're wrong in some cases they will be correct but uh, perhaps not as often okay everybody uh, i hope you got something uh, from this theoretical video on the accelerated dragon uh, any feedback questions recommendations in the comments are more than welcome and uh, stay tuned for more chess thanks very much bye